Okrima Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Shomulikai. Joining me today is former Miss South Africa, Shudu Fazo Musida, here to unpack her latest children's book titled, I Am Shudu, Finding My Voice, Knowing My Strength. Welcome, Shudu. Hi, thank you so much for having me, Tabi. I Am Shudu, Finding My Voice, Knowing My Strength is your second children's book, and the book deals with bullying and the power of friendship. So why was it so important for you to tackle these topics in the form of a children's book? I wanted to tackle these topics in the form of a children's book because of how important it is to have conversations like these with children. Uh, more often than not, we try to shield them um, by having very basic conversations with them. I don't know if you've heard that saying where if you have a roof over your head, you should feel lucky and nothing should be wrong in your life. But currently bullying is killing children. I heard of a case in Namibia where a child who was nine years old died by suicide because of bullying. And when we look at bullying, we don't really understand the mental health impact that it has on children. And I am a testament of that. I was bullied for seven years. And to this day, it still affects me. It affects how I look at myself. It affects my identity. It affects how I interact with people. I was an extrovert uh, growing up. Um, but by the time I was 14, because of all the bullying I had endured, I became an introvert. I became very guarded, very shielded, and wanted nothing to really do with the outside world and wanted to just hide in the shadows. But that's no way for anyone to live, especially children. Um, so this book is a seat at the table for children to have conversations about things that impact them, that impact their mental health. But more than that, instead of using bullying as a character development tool, I wanted to use this book to interact with children and make them understand that they do have a voice, that they can speak up if they're being bullied or abused in any way because bullying is abuse and I also just wanted to let them know that they're seen and also give them a book that they understand because I don't know if you know the stats but currently um, I think last year it was over 80 percent of children age 10 couldn't read for meaning and that's because the books that we give them don't really address the issues that currently affect them by the time children are 10 now they understand so much more than we did back in the day because of uh, social media, how exposed they are. So why shield them from conversations that they're going to have anyway? Why shield them from things that we think don't affect them, but actually affect them on a daily basis? Why uh, not give them a seat at the table to say, I'm not okay? And also respond in a way that makes them feel safe, but also understand that it's okay to not be okay. Throughout this book, you share your own story. Can you briefly give us some insight into your childhood growing up in Limpopo and having to change schools frequently as you and your mother moved from place to place and how this played into your mental health as a child? Growing up in Limpopo was very interesting because it's a place where my village, we didn't really have much. You know, you've got gravel road, you are um, eating more bunny worms. When you want a fruit, you just go literally around your grandfather's compound or house and literally just find a mango or an avo. It was like a very simple life, you know. Um, you weren't scared to look like a fool, you know, like we grew up in a space where new dance would come out and you'd be the first one trying it, looking weird at first but you're just having fun you just want to you know like have fun and smile and just really enjoy the company that you have because it's not really anything material that defines who we are as people uh, we embrace difference if someone comes in with a different language that we don't understand we will try and butcher that language until we understand each other because the whole point is community it's interacting it's connecting and it was very different when I moved schools because I took that with me there where I didn't really speak the languages that they spoke there um, literally took me three months to learn English and I learned that watching TV I didn't really take myself too seriously because my whole point was I was eager to learn I was eager to interact I was eager to connect and understand and adapt to this new environment that I was in but it's very interesting how we've been conditioned as a human race to embrace sameness and not difference because it makes us feel comfortable. So we don't, children like sponges. So they also take from what they learn in their, their surrounding environments where uh, just because I didn't speak the language, that means you must other this person. Just because I didn't really look like them or didn't grow up with them, that means you must other. 
this new kid. And that's where the bullying started. Um, it was because of my difference. And it was very interesting for me because my mind couldn't really comprehend why my difference had to be used as a tool against me. Because I grew up in an environment that said difference is great because we get to learn so much from each other. I get to learn your language. I get to learn how you do things. I get to learn the foods that you like and really try them and see what makes you you, you know, and then get to this environment that was completely different where my difference became a weapon against me, which is why I wanted to be silent and really stay in the shadows and in the corner. Because if my difference, how I speak, how I present myself, everything that makes me me is the reason why I'm being bullied. So clearly there is something wrong with me. And then as you grow up, which is why I wrote this book, as you grow up, you get to realize that there's nothing wrong with you, you know? And that's like, I think it's such a simple phrase that there's nothing wrong with me, but as children who are being bullied, we're not really taught about those conversations with ourselves. Bullying is a reflection of the person that is bullying the other child or the other person, but you think it's a reflection of you. And once you understand that it's a reflection of the child who's bullying you or the person that is bullying you, you flip the script because the conversation is not just about the child that's being bullied, but it's also about the child that's bullying the other child. Because clearly there are issues there that need to be addressed on both sides. The effects of the bullying on the one child, but also why the other child is bullying. So the why is always important. And once we 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 get to the root of that, um, and that's that's where the the change starts. And talking about how you were bullied, can you tell us when and how did you find your confidence, and what advice can you give to someone with low self esteem? Confidence is a very um, interesting thing because it's it took. I think I was twenty five. The first time I found myself beautiful, or even found myself worthy of people calling me that, or people seeing me as worthy, because you see constant validation. If you're being bullied all the time, especially from a very young age, especially your formative years, you find yourself seeking constant validation from the world about your worth. Um, I think I was around twenty four, twenty five, when I realized that I am enough. I as I I as Shudupadzo as myself right now am enough. So I think I was around twenty five when I really got my confidence because even when um I was on public stages and whatever else before that it was very difficult for me to affirm myself because of how the conversations that I would have with myself I basically took over from my bullies for over ten years and I began bullying myself because even when they stopped. It's like that was the norm that I got used to, the abuse that I started inflicting on myself. And Shudu, you are a well-known advocate for mental health awareness. In 2021, you launched the online mental health initiative, the hashtag Mindful Mondays. So can you tell us more about the initiative and why do you think mental health is such an important subject to highlight? Um, when I launched it, it was during COVID. They called me the COVID Miss South Africa. But it was during a time where Mental health was always a conversation that was swept under the rug. But at that time, it was a silent pandemic that was looming in every single society across the world. We're trying to address physical recovery um, uh, from this virus that's going around. But the anxiety and the the, the depression um, incidences actually went up. And it was so interesting how we're not having these conversations, but clearly we're anxious. Clearly, um, uh, mental health diseases and illnesses have risen because of COVID. Um, so why are we not having these conversations? And then you realize that people fear what they do not know. The stigma that is attached to mental health is because people don't know what these things mean. As soon as you say someone suffers from depression or um, they suffer from anxiety, it's like we're labeling people, but with things that we don't even understand what they mean. Like... Um, how the, the WHO defines health. It's a, it's a state of physical, mental and social well-being, not just the absence of disease or infirmity. So our mental health needs as much attention as our physical health. So it was really important for me to educate and give people information so they don't have to be scared of something that they live with on a daily basis, their mental health. Uh, without the mind, the mind is the powerhouse. We can't, we can't really go anywhere as a society. And so um, that's when I partnered with the South African Depression and Anxiety Group. And they had 
psychologists and psychiatrists and mental health professionals that freely donated their time to educating not only South Africans, but the global community because it reached far and wide about mental health so they could understand themselves more, they could be more aware and their awareness would allow for them to destigmatize mental health in their individual communities because it's 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 one thing for me to start it, but it needs us as a community to 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 take it forward and implement it in our in our different um, communities. And could you say finding your voice and strength put you in the path to become Miss South Africa? And are you hoping to inspire children with this book? Uh, finding my voice and my strength actually, actually happened post Miss South Africa. Um, I think finding my voice and my strength didn't need a crown for, for it to happen. A crown cannot give you your voice or your strength. Um, so it was post Miss South Africa when you realized that everything that I'd been telling children with the first book, that we all wear an invisible crown. Um, and that crown has ways that we see ourselves and define ourselves and see ourselves through the eyes of those that love us and admire us um, and look up to us. Um, and that can be a family member or even a friend. And it was a beautiful time when I realized that um, I never want to be at a seat that does not respect my strength of my voice. Um, and that was because of the different uh, settings that I'd found myself in. And I realized that I needed to create new, healthier, holistic uh, pathways about how I see myself and my place in the world. You know, um, I won Miss South Africa because of my voice and the strength that was within. I don't know where it came from at the time, but realizing that I could make a change just by speaking up about something that was affecting so many people, but was silent and wasn't really spoken about in different societies. That was big. It shows what can happen when we use our voices for good, when we use our voices to create and not to break and to build, you know, and not to break things down. And it was a beautiful time because even through the process of working on this book, I got to reflect on the things that I had buried about like certain bullying experiences, like things that were linked to even hair, you know, um, things that were linked to how I look at myself, how I look at my body, um, so I, I would sit and like there was a day I was actually sitting down here and I had the sun's rays on my face and I was just reflecting on a bullying experience um, that's also in the book. And um, it was so beautiful to see how far I've come because reflection allows for us to basically take count of how far we've come from the traumatic experiences that we've had. And what can we expect to see from you in future, Shudu? Yo, um, continuing to advocate for mental health, especially for children, continuing to be of service to the world, but more, more than anything else, also just being of service to myself and building a new narrative about what it looks like to be a woman that wants to be it all and do it all while she's still taking care of herself. And lastly, Shudu, your first book, Shudu Finds Her Magic, was a hit and was translated into six of South Africa's official languages. So what are you hoping to achieve with this one? Uh, this one comes in five languages, but I'm I'm hoping to achieve more conversations in society. Um, I think the beauty of Shudu Finds Her Magic was it showed schools, the different schools that I went to, the different people that I interacted, it showed me the fact that children actually want to have these conversations. They know so much and we just need to give them a seat at the table. This one is longer. It's more of a chapter book and it's for an older age group as well. Um, so I'm growing with the children that read the first book as well. Um, and it will be interesting to see what their feedback is to this book and what conversations we can spark from this one too. That was Shudu Fadzo Musida speaking to Krima Media's Polity about her book, I am Shudu, finding my voice, knowing my strength.